Oh, man. And this is the most fucking depressing thing I could bring up. Um, how about if we bring up the uh, Mpreg thing I showed you? Because tonight yes. we're talking about the Beatles. Uh, the first thing, which I might take one of the images from the, the mem. There's apparently a pregnancy mem on DeviantArt because there's a mem for everything. And I sent it to you, Sparky, right? Yes. Uh, why don't you describe it? One second. Let me just pull it up here. Yeah. It's the one with it's the one here with 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 John and Paul. Yeah. And they're very adorable looking. They literally, it un, un, If you had just shown this to me without the context of telling me that it was Beatles impreg, I would have not known that this was supposed to be John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Yeah, they barely look like them. They look more like. I they look like caricatures of caricatures of them, like, like secondhand character. Like it, it's like it's like that that like I like this my favorite description of say how westerns and samurai films kind of got influence off each other. That by say the final leg, it was like a a photograph of a shadow of a statue of a real person. Yeah, that's a, that's what we're looking at with the Beatles. I mean, the Beatles are not hard to caricature, you know. Well, you know, they're the, four of the most iconic faces of all time, so. Well, that's the thing. Like they they look vaguely like them in some weird ethereal sense, but not. But they're so simplified and kind of anime looking. They don't really. They they look like emoticon versions. That's how caricature they are. Yeah, they're the emoji beetles. Anyway, but in this case, uh, what 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 are they up to? What wacky hijinks are the uh, beetles up to now in their emojicon state? Okay, well somehow, Paul McCartney is pregnant with John Lennon's baby. Yeah, and everybody's going to go, wait, how is that possible? Well, viewing audience, if you're not familiar, if you're not like an internet weirdo like me, Thomas Go, or Tackbutt, or whatever you call him, or say Sparky, he was a nice and cool internet weirdo, you would never heard of the praise Mpreg. Not lame. What? As a SpongeBob. Anyway, moving on. The, it, the, I actually don't know how Mpreg works. I've never. It, Fully it, understood that. Okay, here's the thing. It's it's sort of like a kind of like a fudgy sort of world building thing where every fan fiction that has Mpreg, they'll just have some. They'll either have an explanation that's either magic or some sort of bizarre pseudoscience, which we'll get to later with the fanfic we're gonna read. Read. By the way, it's very long, so we're only gonna like read like bits and pieces of it. Now, does any of this have to do with Paul McCartney being dead? Possibly. Maybe his corpse gives birth to the new Paul McCartney. I would like to see that. Yeah. I would like to see that. The current Paul McCartney, the fake Paul McCartney, is the illegitimate child of John Lennon, and he grew up super fast Twilight style. <laughs> this is getting good. I think I think we can start working on our own Beatles fanfic. Yeah. Like, in fact, I would probably... we And then we could publish it like a, one of those bizarro fiction novels. You ever read one of those? Oh yeah. This would be the perfect setup for one. You know, and and call it some absurd fucked up name. I just so I don't know why the Beatles. Because that's the thing, the Beatles have such a large, massive, they are such a massive movement that you'll have fans from every spectrum. But actually, here's the thing, uh there's sort of this idea on TV tropes and various other places that kind of stipulate that the, the, on the various ends of the fandom spectrum, on one end, if you have a really small, close-knit fandom, you won't have that many weirdos, and if you do, they're kind of, like, you know, kind of weird, mild, but friendly. And then on the other end, the, the fandom will be, you know, friendly enough. But then in the middle, you'll have these crazy, kind of scary-ass fans. Still there? No. No. <laughs> no, I'm talking to Ghost, but... <laughs> but say the Beatles is a large enough fandom that you'll have everything from sort of just the mild sort of like yeah I like the Beatles I have all their albums through Mpreg. And With, the Mpreg is just where it goes off the rails. It's just where it goes off the rails and then it keeps on getting weirder and weirder, and then you just kind of go like uh, are we even are we even at the Beatles concert anymore I'm scared. This person's whole gallery is pregnant Paul McCartney. Yeah, there's just this entire gallery of like. Dozens upon dozens of pregnant Paul McCartney. I like that Paul McCartney is always the mom in this situation. It, I, I get, well, he's more matronly than, say, John Lennon. It's true. And, by the way, the person who did this is, in fact, a 29-year-old German man. Really? Yeah. 
It says right here in the front page. Master. Hail. Huh? I'm sorry, Master? Master Lennon, though, who we're saying goodnight to. Oh, 29, male, John Lennon. Yeah. Is this the guy? Is this the dude? This is the guy that shot uh, Lennon. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, the catcher in the rye. He did a caricature of the catcher in the rye guy. Holy crap. That's so weird that this guy's entire gallery is like Beatles related shit. Everything, just Beatles. He has the Beatles fan art and then he has the monkeys fan art. Oh, he also has um, a fan art for uh, 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 John, uh, not John, Donnie Darko where Frank meets uh, the walrus. So Donnie Darko was the walrus. Was, was the walrus. Yeah, but anyway, but you know, actually, you know what the the pregnancy mem pictures this guy did reminds me of? What's that? You ever you ever see that that artist that did uh that did the 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 uh Human or however you pronounce her name that did the uh but the... that's exactly what it looks like the the Scandinavia in the world. Yeah, that that's that like I don't know it like it's this you ever see a style that really isn't an actual style but looks familiar because it's so generic. I feel like this person has taken some kind of cues from Human, though. It because Human's one of those artists that you know there there are certain artists that if you go into DeviantArt you kind of fall into their camp somehow the bigger popular artist, and then you see plenty of like sort of uh, like copy ops and uh, like they're kind of like Xeroxes of this person. There's a because Kevin Bulk, the guy who does the Ouija's life, yeah, uh, or the sucks to be Ouija comics, yeah. There's a I mean you could argue that Tom Preston is kind of like. But I think they, they congealed separately. But there is a guy who literally tries to draw like Kevin Bulk, and he follows me. Oh, my God. I can't God. remember his name. Oh, my God. But he has, like, he has like blonde dreadlocks. Oh, okay. Yeah. One of those. Okay. And, like, all of his work in his gallery looks like Kevin Bulk stuff. Huh. He's not bad, but he looks like, a, like the Kmart version of Kevin Bulk. That's exactly what his work looks like. Huh. Mm-hmm. That, that... Huh. You're welcome. Okay, uh, that... Yeah, that that does sound like... Uh, like, that that sort of be a good phrase for it. The Kmart whatever. Kmart blank. But, like, okay, I got a question. What do you think of Human's work, just to have a small tangent? Um, I mean, it's all right for the most part. It's like, actually, you know, it's really funny. There was a what? person who became friends with Human and did a couple, like, trades with them. And this happens to be the yeah. artist that I used to be that was friends with some other people that I, were, I was friends with and was kind of in the same little community as was. And here's the funny thing. They began drawing pictures of repeatedly they got an interest in World War II and Hitler for the most part. And they had this weird running joke where they kept on drawing Hitler in like uh, kinky like Lady Gaga boots. So, so they had Kumon draw Lady Hitler? Something like that. They did sort of a trade like that, but this is the funny thing. This is the weird thing. They were friends with Human, who supposedly like um, I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to figure. But here's the funny thing. They eventually, uh, this person eventually became a Nazi, an actual Nazi. What? Yeah. This is the weird thing. Oh, did I send you the uh, the Bichonin, uh Paul McCartney? You did, but send me the Nazi. Okay. Let me let me go find them because they're under a different name now. Um, SS. I rat like 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 an actual master race Nazi. Yes. Not like a ultimate World War Two fan Nazi. Yeah. No. No. Nope. Just they 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 used to be. Weirdest thing is that they used to be a feminist. Uh, you know, and they used to be in the queer spectrum, and they were a feminist, and against you know the the patriarchy and the the gender binary and things like that. And now then, that they're a Nazi. Now they're a Nazi. Um, that's, that's fucking weird. It's it's weird, and I I think it kind of gives credence to my theory that if you become obsessed enough with World War II and draw Hitler enough, you will become a Nazi. That's that's my theory. I can get behind that because like that person uh, that worked on the the. Uh, Rise of the Guardians, uh, children's book. 
I'm trying to think of their name, like Fobs or something like that. You know who I'm talking about? Uh, let me see. Rise. Wait, they they're a Nazi. Let me see. Uh, I don't think they're a Nazi, like an out and out full on Nazi, but they have one of those galleries that's full of like pictures of like handsome Hitler and handsome Goebbels and stuff like that. The, you know what I mean? Um, you mean uh, what? So our okay, what 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 might their name be? Uh, P H O B S. Wait, wait, wait. P P H P P H O B S B S. Phobus. I think oh. that's what it is. Oh, they. Because when you see their work, you'll you'll recognize it. Oh, this person. Yeah, but they don't seem to draw Hitler anymore. No, they've gotten away from it. So I think. But like they have one. Of, whenever I think of like Nazi art, that's literally the person I think of first. Yeah, that. And that's... there's always. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh? Go on. Well, there's always these groups, like these little splinter groups, always all over DeviantArt Art for as long as I can remember that I've been on here, that have like, fucking, uh, like, Nazi artwork or Nazi like people in Nazi s uniforms. You know what I mean? Which is weird. And then you'll find there's two camps with these artists. Either they get away from that years later and just kind of draw something else, which they they seem to be drawing, like, I, I don't know what really their their work is about now, but they seem to be drawing um, Avatar fan art, which would be weird for a Nazi to like. Exactly. And other things, but they still seem to have an interest in history and things like that, but they seem to have gone beyond World War Two and Nazism. At the very least, they seem to be drawing, uh, in this case, um, Eastern and uh, Asian people a lot, like people from uh, India and those kind of in that kind of general area. So I mean, that's good to see. That's, and the, actually, I think I, uh, Hitler Hitler actually didn't have a thing with Indians. He, I, I think he worked with India, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Actually, technically, and I'm not going to say too much about it, but apparently, Hatma Gandhi was um, kind of, kind of. He was. Yeah, Gandhi was a racist. Gandhi was a racist, but I kind of feel weird about saying that out loud because that's um, – I don't want to get uh, angry litters. Oh, by the way, this is the weirdest thing. This person, Phobes, is from Russia, and we'll, we'll, we'll eventually get to fan fiction. Uh, from Russia, there's an actual – there's a neo-Nazi I know who's like the most well-known neo-Nazi on DeviantArt. Oh, who's that? Uh, Torture Device. You ever, did I ever tell you about them? Wait, hold on. I think I actually know Torture Device. And the weird thing is, Torture Vice, they, they have some relatively good art, but. Let's see here. There we go. Torture Device Deviant Art. I think I. Yep, I do know Torture Device. And and, and it's, it's the weirdest thing. Oh, also, I found a, a sample of the person's art. Yeah. Uh, this is the art they draw. And it's, the weird thing is that I used to really like their art, but I, think, I don't think it really. It it got to a certain place and never went that far. There we go. Is that Frida Kahlo? Huh? Is that Frida Kahlo? I think so. Yeah. It was... See, and every time you see people like this, the neo-Nazi people, they have like either, uh, freaking. What am I thinking of? Uh, War Machine. Yeah. Or what's that? The tabletop game. Oh, uh, what? uh, goddamn it, Warhammer. Warhammer, there, there we go. They have like Warhammer uh, nine thousand fan art. Yeah. Or they have like a bunch of Doom or Wolfenstein fan art, which would be weird to see Nazis be fans of Wolfenstein. Yeah, because that that, well, they eventually. That's so weird. It's weird when they're fans of Wolfenstein. If they're a fan of Wolfenstein, because it's like, don't you like shoot Nazis in that? Like, aren't you literally shooting what you are? I would just like to see them come out with, like, the they, they're, they'll be one of the people that has a Kickstarter for the pro-Nazi side of the game. Yeah, that probably. Yeah. They, would ha they would have a version where you're shooting the, the guy who's shooting the Nazis. But, um, it's, it's, so, it's, it's so weird because there's sort of weirdly predictable groups of people. Like, say, the other day I was looking for Blender models on um, DeviantArt. Yeah, because I want to try to start working with Blender and ZBrush and things like that. You want to <laughs> why? Why is that? I, I I literally only really want to do it so I can make models of my characters. <laughs> that's that's all I really want to do it for. That's still cool though. Well, it it I'll... huh? Say so what? Uh, well, it it's so that like say I can have a posable model and I can like figure out how to draw them from different angles, basically. Oh. 
So that's a good idea. I don't see I don't see an issue with that. Right, and maybe I could do it for if I if I get good enough, and that's gonna take a while. But maybe I could do it for some of your characters, so that like I can make posable models. Oh, that would actually be really sweet. Yeah, and I still need to look. I I still want to look over your comic notes. I have to write some. Okay, uh, when, whenever. <laughs> so I I can. Oh, actually, one quick thing. Uh, I might we might talk about this later in the cast, but um, okay. But so there's this. Um, so I was looking for poser models, and we'll get back to the Beatles and. I was looking for him, and I found, like, a Lugia head. So I looked at it and went, okay, this is interesting. And this guy was apparently modeling a Lugia, of a character of his, a character who's a, a, an FC. A fan an F- fan character for anyone who doesn't, and isn't in the know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like OC is for original character. FC is for a character created by you, but in a specific parameter of a specific franchise. See, I didn't know that. I've always seen uh, OCs for fan fran- uh, for uh, franchises referred to as OCs as well. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's like, but first of all, it's like okay, it's not an original character if it's connected to an already existing franchise. It's fan character, you weird person. Like it's my it's my OC. It's like that's a Sonic character. My Sonic OC. Yeah. So sweetheart, say FC. Just ah. yeah, sweetheart, just shh. I'm not angry. I'm just saying language. <laughs> like, shh, it's okay. I, I didn't mean to yell. I'm sorry. We love you still. Anyway, but so it was up there, uh, FC of a Lugia. In this case, the FC being a large-breasted Lugia anthro. Yeah. And in this case, I was looking at their comics as all their comics. Like, I'm thinking, I'm looking at the comics going, okay. And in this case, you can easily tell certain people's fetishes from their work. Yeah. And in this case, I was looking, okay, so their fetish need to be large-breasted, large-proportioned women, like with big breasts, big hips, big ass. Anthros, and I'm sitting there going, there's a third one, because they always come in threes most of the time. Right. If, if there's, like, two product ones, you go, there's a third one, and you know what my first guess before, before actually finding it was? What's that? I was thinking, okay, big... And most of the women who are big proportion, they're also much bigger than usually all the other characters. Like, you have this big-breasted woman who is, like, bigger than all the other characters and usually an anthro. Like, like nine feet tall. Like nine feet tall or ten feet tall and things like that. So I'm thinking, okay, large sexualized females. Four. It has to be four. And I f- and no more than three seconds later, I found her four comic. Uh... Like, I have I have the superpower. I can get someone's weird fucking fetish. That's that's beautiful and sad. It's beautiful and sad. Like I I'm a tainted human being. <laughs> I I. What a, <laughs> what a day to be alive! What a time to discover your powers. My my power seem my power and obsession seem to be guessing people's weird fetish. Like this would be like the time frame whenever you either get your Hogwarts letter or you get your you get your uh, little uh, welcoming party to Xavier School for the Gifted. Yeah. Your X Men mutant powers, guessing people's fetishes. Yeah, I, I don't know how useful it will be in battle, but I probably could dig up some dirt on Magneto. <laughs> that'll be that'll be my that'll be my uh, contribution to team. Like, uh, hey, Tommy, what 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 can you do? I can guess every weird thing Magneto jerks it to. Especially in threes. You know, I somehow have a feeling though that 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 uh, Charles already knows. If anybody would know. I don't know. I think pretty sure Charles would have a filter on that because he would be like, I don't want to see that. It's not my business. <laughs> he, he seems to be the type that wouldn't want to be intrusive about that. Especially about his friend. Of course, you know, I would have to tell him, Charles, real friendship means you know the exact weird fetish your friend has. Real friendship also means that dude wouldn't have tried to kill you so much. I don't know. I think that's there's certain friendships where he becomes such good friends you start hating each other. I'm I pretty, guess that's true. I'm pretty sure secretly Charles and Xavier still like Skype one once in a while. Like you know, one day like like uh, Charles Xavier is like I don't know, surfing live journal because he still does that. And then Mag- Magneto comes on. Like do 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 do. Yo, Charles, you dickwad. What is it? Guess who's peeing in your pool? <laughs> what? You're peeing my pool. No, it's one of my kids. Why, is... Magneto? We just cleaned that. What is this furry thing here? Huh? 
that's the new Jägermeister uh, advertising thing. Oh. We're, we're, okay, you remember that time? Okay, we might talk about this in another podcast, but uh, Jägermeister is apparently trying to appeal to furry market. And well, they're I've... doing they're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, it's actually well, it's uh, some really good art. Kind of, you know, it reminds me of somewhat. What? I think they were actually trying to go for the um, hipster animal aesthetic. Yeah, I don't think they're trying to be furries, but I don't I don't think they quite realize what they've done here. Yeah, it's like uh, this looks like some. This looks kind of like the high quality furry art you can show your family. Except I like this. I like this pigeon dude. <laughs> except I, I, I just, it's really funny. So basically, it's kind of like, yeah, you kind of like remember Orangina? You remember that? That and they had they uh they have the commercials with the furries in them. Yeah. The, yes. The the really weirdly sexualized ones. Yes. It's it's that kind of thing you're kind of sitting there going, uh, okay. But um, anyway, but so let's get to the other things. But uh, but I can guess people's fetishes. Like I can guess yours, but you don't really try to hide it. Hello. I'm sorry. Say it again. I I, I can guess yours. Big. Oh yeah. 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 Mine is. I think I I'm thinking at this point mine is starting to get obvious. Well, <laughs> of course. Uh, like uh, in this case, I think you have a thing for chubby but uh, chubby bellies. I love the bellies. Monster girls. Love the monster girls. And Barras. I love Barras. You pretty much nailed it. See, I yeah, but in this case, it's kind of like I I can guess it, but it's like I'm just like and there I I guess it's like that's my friend's my friend's passion. He loves that stuff. <laughs> Yay! But with this person, I'm just kind of sitting there going, okay, so it it was more like it was supposed to kind of form a passive guessing, and I I feel bad because sometimes like I I'm. I enjoy mean spiritedness in a certain way. Yes. There's a part of me that loves mean spirited, and then there's a part of me that kind of goes, "No, you shouldn't be mean spirited." There's like the part of me that kind of goes, "You shouldn't be mean spirited." That's mean. Like, well, like, well, like you know where the line is, though. I know where the line is. There's certain things I would never, I would not do because that's shitty. And then there's like, and then there's a time when I'm private by myself. Like, I have had thoughts. I've written down jokes or horrible things that I'm never going to show to the public because. It would be hurtful and evil. Exactly. Like, like I have an evil part of me, but even it kind of knows when to not show its face. And I mean, you know, like on this podcast, especially too, we're mean to weirdos, but it's not like we're not weirdos. Well, we're weirdos, and there's a certain point where I'll just like, even with like, say this guy, maybe I'll go find it. Let me go find it. But one second, okay, I sent you the 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 fic, and it's long. I didn't know how long it was. The the fan fiction? Yeah, it's really long. So we're only gonna read like parts of it. We're gonna like kinda skip through and find the weirdest parts. And also it's apparently the site that it's on no longer exists, so that's like a a archive thing. Is it like a multi chapter epic? I I plugged it into um open office and it's like twenty one pages long. Wow yeah, in the way yeah. it's formatted. And it's also formatted like a goddamn script. You ever notice that a lot of really shitty fan fictions are formatted like really poorly done scripts? Yeah, or it looks like 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 when you're in high school and you had to read the Diary of Anne Frank play. Yeah, it's like that. Except this is not the Diary of Anne Frank. It's not the this di- is this is this is Paul McCartney gets pregnant. <laughs> yeah, a lot lot fewer Nazis. A lot fewer Nazis. Um, there might be a Nazi in there that's hidden like a ghost. See, Rise of the Ghost Nazis, that'd be a great movie yeah. for sci-fi. Yeah, that would be cool. You know, also, okay, so let me find, uh, let me find, uh, okay, let me see. Okay, so I, I sent it to you, and it's horribly long. And there's also another one where I think it's John Lennon got pregnant with the baby. See, that's one you don't see very often. Which is, I, it's it's weird. Uh, go on. Well, I did get the main one from Soup Fiction. Yeah, it's Soup Fiction, which used to be the um, the, the de facto um, Beatles fan fiction site. Because the Beatles love soup. I don't know. I'll, I I think there were other fan fiction sections, but this is the 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 the, the it was one of those sites where it was like no, actually, what it is is it's the music fan fiction site. Oh. And I so think that's... and I think it was a competitor to um, fanfiction.net. 
I bet we could find some crossover fix with like John Lennon and uh, uh, Kurt Cobain. Yes, that'd be great. Okay, so um, okay, so you start. Okay, so let me see here. You, you got it loaded up? Because I'm I'm closing up on like I had like 50 tabs open. He, he goes like he goes like, oh Paul, do it more, more, harder, faster. I'm not gonna do Beatles voices. Yes, do it. <laughs> he's gonna be like, he's Paul, oh Paul. Actually, I moaned and gasped as Paul thrust deeply inside of me. Goo 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 goo. We breathed heavily as we rocked rhythmically back and forth together on the bed. Then I started to get this strange feeling as Paul caressed my breast. It's it's about here's the funny thing. You wanna you wanna have some information about this? What's that? It's a self infert fic of the female author who gets Paul oh. pregnant. And you have to see how she got him pregnant. Let me see here. Hold on. Let me see here. He slid his tongue into my mouth. A feeling almost like I was coming into him, even though I knew that was impossible. Right before he came, he pulled out, because we didn't want or need me to get pregnant. I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> Paul said as he clutched his stomach. Oh, baby, was it something you ate last night? Before he could respond, he darted to the bathroom. When I caught up to him, he was throwing up near the toilet. Near the toilet? Not in it? <laughs> uh, no, no. He has like uh, Paul McCartney had one of those giant climbing toilets. Uh, he's a big person. Beatles toilet. Yeah, it's just you, you climb in, you get flushed down it. <laughs> That's another fetish, I'm afraid. Yes. Um, let me see here. Uh, uh, okay, okay, he said weakly. There was tiny beads of sweat forming on his forehead. I haven't thrown up in years. He moaned as he broke into tears. Oh, honey, it's all right. You're going to be fine. It's probably just a virus or something. I was trying to comfort him. Hello? Uh, I was just checking. Uh, I was just... Uh, speak up. Am I, not, am I not coming in? Let me see. One second. Uh, speak. Uh, start talking now. I am the walrus. Okay, you're coming in. I just, I just need to find a better, like call recorder than this one because it gets a little funky but still the la the other one I like I bought that one I bought that one for 20 bucks the walrus was Paul yeah anyway number nine number nine it's gonna be <laughs> one of those is those things for the Beatles people yeah um I love the Beatles too Every, but everyone loves the Beatles I don't know I don't love the Beatles I, I find I like some of their songs but I'm not really as enamored I'm not like, well, because I like Elvis too, but Elvis was a fucking hack when you think about it. Well, I kind of like Elvis's voice better than the Beatles, but, you know, but, but, well, you know, the person you actually should like because he's the full package is James Brown. I love James Brown. That's true. Did you know that the residents met James Brown? Really? Yeah. I didn't know that the residents met anybody. I thought when they, I thought they didn't even know each other. Well, the thing is that one time while the residents were like, um, they were traveling along a back, like they were like on the back road just resting, and James Brown's uh, tour bus, oh, uh, milk. Anyway, James Brown's tour bus, like they, like he pulled up and they said, James Brown, went, hey, um, we're lost. We don't know where's the main road, and and the residents went, hey, we know where the main road is. You can follow us. <laughs> and so James Brown followed a, a, a tour bus full of eyeball-headed men. God damn. And you know what my dad said last night? What? It, it just makes me so mad that it never happened. James Brown should have cut an album with the Resonance. That would have been perfect. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh. And then a bunch of weird noises start. Yeah. Man, you know, if if I was better at making music, I I would I would make that mashup. I would totally listen to that mashup. I, I, that mashup should exist. It'd be like sad, like burn, do, burn, do. get up, uh, get on up. You know, you know who should make that mashup? Who? Who would actually? He could probably do it. Now, Grin. Let me see here. The the guy who does the Lemon Demon and stuff. I love that guy. Yeah, he did because he did that that great um, mashup between um, Little Crocodiles by. Um, 
what's his name? Can't remember his name. That guy, that the 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 guy who plays the piano. Who's uh, Little Crocodiles? Yeah, Little Crocodiles. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really familiar. Elton with that John. One. Oh, Elton John sings a song called "Little Crocodiles." Yeah, he did the song, a little the song "Little Crocodiles." Yeah, because uh, Chanel. Oh, uh, oh, Crocodile Rock. Yeah, Crocodile Rock. Yeah, he did a, a mashup of Crocodile Rock and Chop Suey by uh, System of Down. Yeah, I gotta hear that now. Yeah. Let me see here. Hold on, I'm looking it up. Crocodile Chop. We'll, we'll be back to the fan fiction in a moment. I love I love Elton John too. I like Elton John too. I like lots. Of, we like <laughs> we like lots of things. I love the I love that song Benny and the Jets. <laughs> of course, <laughs> Benny and the Jets. Which is funny because I'm apparently the one that doesn't like anything in the group of of Ian, Danielle, and me. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's because I've said enough times very different like. Like, you know, like when we watched Frozen, I was on my phone most of the time. So, like, what? I mean, I know what you like. Yeah. You like eyeballs. Yeah, I like eyeballs. That's your fetish. <laughs> well, in this case, maybe you could guess maybe my fetish is monsters. Ghost. Ghost. Eyeball ghost fetish. Yeah. Uh, Adrian Brody. Yeah. So, I think I pretty much nailed it. Were we reading a fan fiction? Yeah, we read a fan fiction. Let's get back to it. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Where were we? Uh, sweetheart, are you okay? Uh, you went into the kitchen. Oh, honey, it's all right. You're going to be fine. It's probably just a virus or something. I said trying to comfort him. Apparently, this fan fiction is also part of the canon of uh, Hurt Comfort Fiction. Or comfort fiction? Yeah. Okay, here's the basic tip. A character, like character one, like say, um, name a wrestler. Uh, the Ultimate Warrior. The Ultimate Warrior. Name someone May he who rest would be... in peace. Huh? Maybe I'm sorry. In... Name some... Maybe rest in peace. Um, and someone you would pair with him. Uh, Hulk Hogan. A uh, Hulk Hogan. Ultimate Warrior. Like one day, like Hulk Hogan comes to his house because Ultimate Warrior hasn't shown up in a couple days, and he comes in there and Hulk, you know, and Ultimate Warrior is just like on his couch clutching his butt, and it's like, <laughs> and it's like, like, and Hulk Hogan's like, Ultimate Warrior. Or no, okay, do a Hulk Hogan voice. Ultimate Warrior. And Ultimate Warrior is just like, my butt, I'm constipated. And then the fanfic proceeds with like Hulk Hogan giving him an enema and patting him on the head. <laughs> I didn't know that was a genre of fanfiction. It is. I guess everything is a genre of fanfiction. Um, I know. By the way, I need to write that now. That would be that's the best. That's the best ship too, because they're enemies. They're on stage enemies. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you know they're in secret rubbing butts. Exactly. I don't know if you've ever seen. There's a. It's a little animation going around that has the Iron Sheik. Yeah. And it's the the Iron Sheik hanging out with uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Yeah. Which uh, this was back whenever WWE or I'm sorry WWF was still like like totally like oh everything's real nothing scripted the bad guys and the good guys hate each other. And they were enemies, so if they were seen hanging out, that would have been, like, super terrible. Right. But I feel like that's exactly what would happen. Like, they, they all hung out. Yeah. Yeah, they all hung out. So Actually, uh, one second, I had to quickly check something. <laughs> I'm kind of, okay, I, I'm, I'm staring at the, the playback devices, speaker. God damn it, why isn't, why isn't this working? Uh, oh, let me... Let me uh, adjust certain things. Uh, hey, you, you still there? No. Nah. Okay. Oh, there it is. Wait. Stupid son of a bitch. Technology. Oh, sorry. God. <laughs> no, it's not you, man. Because I'll just leave. <laughs> it's okay, Sparky. You're not a son of a bitch. Yeah. Um. Okay. It's. I'm. I'm just trying to get my levels to work because I'm kind of afraid that. No, I don't want the internet. Don't I don't want to mess with the internet. Give me give me my sound controller. Sound controller computer. Give me that. I'm sorry. I, oh, I just found a tab with that that uh, pony fan fiction. 
that we read on stream once. The flourish I won. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get back to the fan fiction. I'm trying to get the sound because I'm kind of looking at the sound. It's kind of looking funny. Okay. All right. Here we go. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna continue. Yeah, you continue to read, but, uh, and I'll see if I can get. Uh, if I can. So. Uh... Oh, honey, it's all right. You're going to be fine. It's probably just a virus or something, I said, trying to comfort him. I went into the kitchen and poured some ginger ale and went down a, uh, I'm sorry, and wet down a wash rag with cold water and walked back with them to him. When I returned to the bathroom, Paul had himself propped up against the wall, and he was extremely pale. I helped him lie down on the floor, put a washcloth to his forehead, propped up his head with a big fluffy pillow. He was panting, out of breath. I guided the glass to his mouth, since he was too shaky to hold it on his own. Shortly after he finished it, he passed out. Paul? Paul? Speak to me! After a few minutes, his eyes slowly began to open, and he got sick again, except this time it was on himself. Mm -hmm. Oh, Paul, I said, as he kept getting sick all over everything. I'm making you a doctor's appointment. I'll be back. I said to him as I headed into the living room for the phone. I'm going to move my microphone closer because I can't see too good here. Okay. Okay. I called his doctor, and he said that he could see him, mm. but it'd be about a week before until then. So a week passed, and Paul's condition was about the same. If not worse, he seemed to be sicker in the morning than any other time of the day or night. I drove Paul to the doctor's that day. I waited several hours in the waiting room for him, worrying the whole time. Finally, after five hours, he came out and wore a very strange face, one that I'd never seen on him before. Uh, doctor? I'm sorry. Um, the doctor needs to see both of us in his office. Why? Are you dying? Are you going to be okay? I'm not dying. I'll be fine. But he needs to see us. All right, I said. We walked into his office, which smelled heavily of rubbing alcohol, might I add. The doctor had a very solemn face, which I knew couldn't possibly be a good sign. Mrs. McCartney. So hold on. She's Mrs. McCartney? Yeah. Okay. She was in the past. She was, a, she was with uh, Paul McCartney. Is she, is, she the, is she the chick with the one leg? I, I have no idea, man. <laughs> um, all right, I said. We walked into... Okay, no, hold on, I already read that part. Mrs. McCartney, he asked? Actually, no, we're not exactly married. Oh, well, your boyfriend here, um, well, it's hard to explain. I examined him thoroughly, and I couldn't find anything wrong with him. Then he said that you two had sex the other night, and just on a lark, I ran several more tests on him, and it turns out that the fertilization process worked backwards. So hold on. Yes. <laughs> on top of the fact that he just got a wild hair up his ass that Paul McCartney of the Beatles, might be pregnant. He found out that reverse fertilization is a thing? Yes. Just out of the blue. Let me see here. Then he brought out a diagram of the female and male reproductive systems. You see, your egg traveled out of you and into his penis, where it probably mixed with his sperm right about here. <laughs> then it kept going up, and apparently it somehow made its way into his abdominal cavity, and it's implanted somewhere in there. Which would basically mean, in plain English, Paul is indeed pregnant. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good reaction. That's a very next statement. <laughs> Does this explain the, the birth giving process? Uh, no. Okay. Yes, yes, I know it's hard to believe. I mean, I've never heard of this happening before. But you, you, you already had a way to explain exactly what happened, even though you've never heard of it before. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Paul broke down and started crying. I held him close to me in my arms in an attempt to calm and comfort him. It didn't seem to help him much, though. Now, Paul will need to be extremely careful, or the baby could crush his internal organs. He uh, doesn't have a uterus like a woman, so this could kill him. This could kill him quite quite <laughs> effectively. Oh, my God. How is the baby growing in there? This is the conspiracy they were trying to they were trying to hide. This is the reason that John Lennon and, uh, and, Her and George Harrison were murdered. Yeah. This is exactly what they're trying to keep the public from knowing. That that men can get impregnated? <laughs> the walrus was a baby. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't John, it was his it was his love child. Ah. Oh. Let me see here. Uh now uh let me see here. He doesn't have a uterus like a woman, so if the baby is pretty much just in there, except it has implanted itself against the side of the organs, it's too small to see now. But when it's big enough to see in an ultrasound, I will check to see if it's a danger to his health. Remove it now! Remove it now! It's a cancer! It's a tuber, you idiot! Yeah, this is not... 
I mean, they could both die. I feel like this is a justified abortion. Well, apparently, uh, Paul McCartney and this is uh, per life. How how does how does the baby? It doesn't explain, man. That's the problem with most of these uh, mpreg fix. They don't really. They either have some really dumb pseudoscience, or they don't explain at all how it works. Ah. Uh, okay, I love I love how direct Paul McCartney is with this. Uh, Paul shuddered at the sheer thought of needing surgery. Um, how am I supposed to give birth? Push it up my dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hi, Kate. Oh, uh, Kate left. She was asking if she could fix me a plate since I'm doing a cast. Oh. She's nice like that. Oh, also, Cece says hi. She's at work right now. Hi, Cece, uh, since you're at work. <laughs> oh, I'll keep you company until then, until she gets home. So let me see here. No, 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 it's nothing like that. Since you don't have the same parts as a woman, it wouldn't exactly uh, be a cesarean section, but we'll still have to cut through your abdominal wall, take the baby out, and repair any damage done. It would be a major surgery, yes, but whatever happens, it'll have to be removed surgically. I swallowed hard, hoping Paul would end up all right. You killed him! You've, you've killed him. Oh, my God. Oh, actually, one second. Uh, can, we st uh, can we stop the recording here so I can see if it worked? Yes. Okay, one second. Shh. Now. Okay. Uh, there are many risks with your pregnancy, Mr. McCartney. Are you sure that you want to carry it to term? Doctor, I'm already pregnant. I want this baby now. You're not going to take it away from me. This baby is a person, too. Just like you and me, except smaller. It deserves to live, to get a chance at life. I've always wanted to be a daddy, and this is my chance. I'm not going to kill my own child. So he is pro-life in this. Yeah. Because I think the author is, like, pro-life, pro weirdly enough. Let me see here. I could not believe that Paul didn't want to just take the easy way out of this. They're, yeah, because they're using the pro-life like terms too. Yeah. Um. Or maybe Paul McCartney really is pro-life in real life. Is he? I don't know. When we got home, all Paul wanted to do was go to bed. I felt bad that he needed that he had to go through this. It was probably all my fault. I should have known something was wrong. Actually, can you eat? Why, off, could you like ease back off the mic a little bit? No. Oh, okay. Why did I have to shag Paul that night? I really wanted him to get an abortion. I didn't want him to risk. I didn't want to risk losing him. But it was his body and his decision, and Does I just couldn't change that. Does it count as an abortion if it's attached to an organ? I don't think so. It, I it, think that really nothing that's happening was supposed to be happening. So yeah, this I is, mean, this is like a, a sin against God. Let me see here. Like I'm, I'm not really a religious man, but I, I, I can tell you this is not right. Yeah, everything here is wrong. Let me see here. Are right, you want to take over for a minute? Yeah, sure. One second. Oh, yeah. uh, where were you? Um. Uh, I just, I can't believe I shagged him. I just want him to have an abortion. Okay, one second. Let me see. Uh, Paul, I'm gonna take you off. The, take you off the pillow. Uh, I. Uh. Um. Dr. Omari pregnant. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't believe Paul didn't want to take the easy way out of this. If I were in his position, I know what I would do. Oh, wait, no, I... I know that I would. When he got home, all Paul wanted to do was go to bed. I felt bad that he had to go through this. It was probably all my fault. I mean, it kind of was. Well, first of all, it kind of was, but really, you can't really say who it's... Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking of blaming Satan at this point, because I think that's the Antichrist. I should have known something was wrong. Well, yeah, but like, you were coming into him? Shouldn't you tell the doctor that? Like, you're a biological mutant, you can get men pregnant. Yeah, like, I feel like there's would be a little bit more of an uproar about what's happening here. Like, is she actually secretly an alien overlord? Set to impregnate our pop stars. Let's see here. I apologize. I'm also working on a commission right now. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I. Why did I have to? Well, you didn't have to have Shag Paul that night. Just capitalize <laughs> like that. I really wanted him to get an abortion. Doesn't count as abortion, sweetie. That's a tumor. I don't want to risk losing him, 
but it was his body and his decision. Yeah, I think it's an unreasonable decision. It's, I think that there should be a court order involved here. There should be a court order. The doctor should say, no, that's a tumor, you idiot! And I just c couldn't change that. Um, This isn't a, your body, your decision. I cannot believe that Paul... Okay. Okay. A few weeks later. A few weeks? What happened in between then? Ow, my stomach hurts. I heard from, <laughs> the, I heard from the bedroom. Poor Polly. Poor, poor Polly. I... Like... <laughs> that sounded so... Um, that sounded really... Uh, 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 sarcastic. Oh, poor, poor Polly. Poor, poor Polly. I went to see him. I laid down next to him on the bed and unbuttoned his shirt, revealing his bare chest and stomach. I rested my head on his stomach and felt the small lump. The tumorous lump. A little high to be a baby, but I called the doctor anyway. I went to put my mind at ease. He said that he couldn't see he could see Paul in a few hours, and he told me some things I could do in the meantime to help ease the pain. Ugh. Of the tumorous growth? That's a tumor. I went back to Paul, who was now double over in pain on the floor. Because I don't think he would be feeling birthing pains or pregnancy pains from that. He was screaming, actually screaming, as opposed to fake, sarcastic screaming, like, oh, ow, it hurts, it really hurts, like, I'm going to put a date baby at my dick, because it hurts so badly. What's that drill tweet where he's all like, put this whole vial uh, urine peddling organ operation in the trash? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I had to find that. Paul, you might want to kill me for this, but get on the bed. <laughs> oh. Well, lift him up onto the bed. You're Mary Sue. You have the strength. Exactly. I can't. I said... <laughs> I can't. Three exclamation points. I sat on the edge of the bed, spread my legs so that one was on each side of him. I put my hands underneath his armpits and pulled him up onto the bed, which was very difficult, not only because of his weight, but also because of all the kicking and squirming he did. God damn. You know he's rich. Why doesn't he have handlers? Why doesn't... Why is anything here? <laughs> because someone had a weird sick need. When I got him onto the bed, I looked at his face, and he was in tears. By the way, there was ellipses. I got a few pillows and put them under his bur his bum. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm thinking this person's from the United States and is just randomly inserting Britishisms into this. Yeah, they're doing that thing. So his pelvis would be like you know, kind of like you're reading something that's trying to be British, and then they say apartment instead of like um, flat. Yeah under his pelvis so it'd be elevated above the rest of his body. It didn't help much, but it got his screaming to dull down. You know, he is a rock star. Why don't they just fill him with some drugs? Yeah. That's actually a really good question. Mm hmm To a low whimper. I just I just wanna hear I wanna find Paul McCartney and make him record sounds like he's in pregnant agony. <laughs> I delicately caressed his fingertips over his bare chest, and I noticed an increasingly large bulge in his pants. Um. Uh, no. Um. I don't know how to react to that. I'm moving on. Moving on. Um. <laughs> My fingers. Let's ignore that. Let's hope it doesn't mean anything. My fingers traveled o o from his chest over his stomach and then to the zipper on his pants. No. Yeah, it means something. No, no, I, I can't. It, I won't. I <laughs> unzipped. He's just going to unzip him and he's going to pee himself or something. I unzipped <laughs> his fly and slid down his pants to around his ankles. I felt him through his boxers. <laughs> 
And as I did so, he reached up and pulled off my blouse. With one this hand. Is, this is just great. This is. I wonder what a blouse looks like. I wonder what this person looks like. What do you think they look like? I have no idea. I, I'm just. I don't know. I'm, I'm imagining B. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> I carefully slid off his boxers as he unlatched my bra. Bra. Sorry for the burp. Is he in agony? He's. I don't know. I guess he's just working through it. Uh, I. <laughs> well, you know, it's Berkey, If you were in agony and CC started unzipping your pants, I guess you would uh, bail too. Yeah, I'd be all like, I'd be all like, here we go, zip. Woo! I took both my hands and slowly ran them up and down his penis. No, <laughs> it's like there it goes. They mentioned penis. He has a penis. As I was like, I think it would have been really funny to pull off her, his uh, boxers and it was like some weird protruding vagina like thing. <laughs> some pulsating HD Geiger, you know, fucking Cronenberg thing. I mean, you, you might as well go the full the full route. Because that's what this is. It's a it's like a fucking David Cronenberg skit. And he was getting hard. So hard. I like to think that she keeps on speaking in such a really sarcastic tone. As I was doing this, Paul was licking my breasts. Um. God damn it. I just, I just don't even know anymore. I felt my skirt go now, and then my panties. Yeah. Er, er, Richard Nixon panties. Right before Paul was going to come, I took him in my mouth at the last second. B. Arthur ah. taking Paul McCartney's load. There we go. This is beautiful. His whole body tensed up, and I could feel that as his, as he shot into my mouth, which I hungrily swallowed. In the midst of all this, the doorbell was ringing. Naturally, of all times, it had to be now. Yeah, that's that's Jesus at the door ready to kill you both. Or the Winchester brothers, or the Ghostbusters, or whoever you would call in this situation. Thank God somebody's stepping in to put a stop to this. Yeah. I got him out of my mouth. It'd be funny if she, like, I I, I like to imagine that she said, Just a minute! <laughs> uh, uh, and threw a blanket over him. Over the obviously pregnant erectile erected man. Well, not just, obviously pregnant, because if you, I'm pretty sure if you looked at Paul McCartney, you would think he has a tumor. He has a very big tumor. He has a big ass tumor. Because you would at least you would at least hope that's what that is. You would you would hope it's a tumor, because that's the only rational explanation. If it's anything else, I'm ready to die. He's not a tumor. Yeah. Uh, a, a blanket over him, and then I quickly. Put on a satin robe. I, I wish it was a snuggie. It's a Satan robe is what it is. Yeah, it's a it's a Satan robe. She's actually Satan. And headed for the door. When I opened it, I stood face to face with Ringo. <laughs> Why? Why did you have to bring poor Ringo into this? Oh, Ringo never hurt nobody. <laughs> poor, poor Ringo. He's just here to find his friend who's been missing for days. It's like, hello. I do a Ringo impression. I, I can't do one. Like asking for his friend. Wait, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I can't do one. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to do a Yako Warner impression. Is he? Re that's the. That's it exactly. Where are we reading that here? We're, um, we're at, with Ringo face to face. Rich, what are you doing here? I wanted to know where what why Paul hasn't been to work in weeks. That's where we're at. Hold on. I'm st I think I might have scrolled down too far. <laughs> we're we're not far that far in, man. We're we're this thing is fucking long. He goes, Rich, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at. I wanted to know why Paul hasn't been to work in weeks. Oh, uh, well, er, um, well, he's, uh, sick. Yeah, he's very, very sick. Oh, is it a very, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Uh, what, what does he have? What does he have? Oh, it's a very rare disease. You know, probably never heard of it. You know, hipster disease. Oh, come now. What's it called? Um, uh, megaphotolophysitis. 
I came up with. Hmm, must be rare. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Is it contagious? <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure Rango, even Rango would be able to tell that's bullshit, but, you know. <laughs> this is always, because I used to have a friend at work, and we would always go, we would always point at each other and go, Ringo's got it. <laughs> and it, it's from this Family Guy skit, but it's just this funny thing. So, because we would talk about the Beatles a lot, but. Anyway. Um. <laughs> okay, uh. No, 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 it's not contagious at all. <laughs> um. Uh, can I come see him then? Um, you come sit in the living room and I'll go ask him. And then she probably mounts Ringo. Oh, shit. <laughs> I I just feel it in my bones. There's going to be four Beatles babies bouncing by the end she, of this. She just preg- impregnates them all. I mean, there's, o- there's only one common denominator here. She has to be killed. She 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 is a... She is a I, I, I like to think this is like a weird uh, spec script for a remake of Species. Here. I led him inside to the chair to a chair and raced towards the bedroom where Paul is laying in on the bed moaning. Do you think it's from the erection or the giant tumor? I think it's from everything. I think something is terribly wrong here and he knows it deep within him. It's like Paul, this isn't a pro life situation, this is a begging for death situation. <laughs> um Paul, Paul, I'm going to have to take you off the pillows. We're going to have to be in pain for a little bit. Just give me some meds. In pain for a little bit. Ringo's coming in, so try to not scream. Okay? Okay, okay? I took the pillow from underneath his bum, and he made a sound very similar to a dog. Maybe that's what's inside his chest. She somehow impregnated him with a dog. You're going to have a puppy. Since his shirt was just unbuttoned, not off, and he had no other clothes on, so I just put him under the covers, under under cover covers of the bed to, up to the mid chest. Now stay here and do not scream. I went after Ringo. She's being kind of abusive towards him. She is. This whole thing is terrible. Okay, come on in this way. I said as I led him to the bedroom. And I like to think there's like an air narrate an narration in Ringo's head. Like some kind of survival horror narration. <laughs> like, as I was led into the room, I could sense a deep wrongness. My 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 cleric practice was kicking in. I could <laughs> sense an evil emanating from my friend. <laughs> he goes, Paul, you don't look well at all. I'm not well. Satan vomit. <laughs> Paul managed to squeak out. Oh, like, I'm not well. Paul managed to squeak out. Here, I'm going to try to keep working on this commission. Okay. Excuse me for asking, but what does Magdafelatis... I'm trying to figure out if this is a joke or not, the, the name of the, the made-up disease name. Oh, like if, it's, like if it actually means something? Like... Maca fatalis, like if it's a day, like maybe it's an in joke. It'd be what terrible do... if you went to Google it and the only result went back to this fan fiction. Yeah, and so what does megaphilus affect? And it goes, and I go, um, I exchange a nervous glance with Paul. It affects the digestive tract. Yes, and I can still imagine Ringo's head going. She told me about the disease. She had a uncertain smile, a fake smile. More of a bearing of teeth than really a smile. <laughs> um, um, well then, Paul, Polly, how do you feel? Uncomfortable. He goes he's pregnant. Out. Yeah, he's pregnant. He's pregnant with a tumor, a tumor dog. He's, he's pregnant with a Cronenberg. <laughs> Rick, let's get you on your way, and shall we? We're going to the doctors in a little bit. We need to get to get ready. When will he be able to come back to work? I, I, I just want the other the narration in Ringo's head going, she's trying to shoo me out now. I know something's wrong. I have to get Paul out of here. Like like some like Paul sends a distress message with his eyes. He's like, mm-hmm. like 
Like he he goes over to Paul and squeezes his hand like that's a single like blink your eyes twice as you're being held hostage. <laughs> and Paul like flutters his eyes twice. Uh, like tries to swallow him slowly like and then he did a fourth flutter. The two flutters means I'm being held prisoner and the second third fourth flutter means something is very wrong and evil. I must I must find what would be another member, a Beals member that um, Ringo would be in cahoots with that would have the, the daggers to kill a demon? Uh, Harrison. Yeah, I had to find Harrison soon. We need to get Paul out of here. I wonder if they, I wonder if they called him, because it'd be, it's George Harrison, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, he doesn't, I, you're going to get in trouble because of all the Beatles fans. are going to be like, he doesn't know the Beatles. Uh, whatever, they'll just send me the Beatles wiki. And then what's her name said, I don't really know. He's going to drive in his condition. No, I'm driving him. But you don't have a license. This is just, just like it's always in the details. Mm-hmm. Wait, she doesn't have a license. How old is I'm, she? I'm sorry I'm sorry to interrupt here. What is for dinner? Um, uh, uh, raviolis. <laughs> um, I'm about to say, like, it just sounds very gloppy over there. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I, 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 I like to wonder what you were thinking I was eating, like, what's Tommy eating? What horrifying, <laughs> unimaginable things he's eating, munching on? It's becoming like, it's becoming like a game over here. I was like, what is? But you don't have a license, he pointed out there. He pointed out the window. Why? No, no, I'm saying he pointed out the window. He pointed out... He had pointed out there. Ah. Uh. Then what do you suggest I do? I could drive, he offered. I need to be with him. I'll bring you two then. Sigh. Yeah. Oh, I love the way she wrote sigh. Like, sigh. Fine. Come back into the house. Wait, he was out of the house already? I like the way I like the way that she thought that like her having like there would be no way if Ringo drives her he would think that there's no way for her to go too. Like I don't know what his plan was here. <laughs> like like I I like I I'm still thinking in the narration, I'll try to get sneak ring I'll try to sneak Paul out off the drive. Oh no, she wants me to bring her along. <laughs> I'll figure out a way to teach her. I like they're driving, and it's like, I'm going to just stop at a convenience store and say, can you go out and get something? And I'll drive off, and we'll take Paul to somewhere else. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm already coming with a better fan fiction this, than this, whoever this person wrote. Yeah, I would like to read the Rescue Paul fan fiction. Yeah. It's like, hey, he's driving off with Paul. Paul, what's wrong? I have a baby. You have a like... baby? Where? An LGBT child? No, in me. Yeah, a demon witch got me pregnant. Paul, you should have told me. Why did you tell me she was a witch? I was under a curse. I led him to the kitchen and abruptly stabbed him. <laughs> like, like every every note in this fiction reads like it's going to turn into a horror movie. Because it already is. I led him to the kitchen and started a pot of tea. Once it was on the stove, I went back to Paul who had already was trying to sneak out the window. <laughs> like, I wish, which I wish it was, I like, there's, like, George, or, or George Harrison. Yeah. George Harrison's trying to, come on, Paul, get out the window. I'm in pain, get me out of here. Oh, honey, oh, sweetie, Ringo's going to drive you to the doctor instead of me, but I'm still going with you now. Oh, wait. Period. Now there's only about forty five minutes until your appointment, so if you're if you'd please put on some clothes, it'd help me out a lot. Holy crap. That was really shitty of you, lady. And, and Paul just said, Okay. He groaned as he difficultly stumbled to the closet. Lady What the hell? Yeah, he's already pregnant. He, he's like, she's turning into an asshole as the pregnant girlfriend. Like, what, what's her deal? He's the pregnant one. 
I walked back out. Okay, so he just leaves him to dress himself. I walked back out to Ringo, who was ser serving himself some of the tea. Okay. Paul is going out. Going to be out here shortly. We he needs to get dressed around thirty minutes, twenty minutes later. Yeah, of course, twenty minutes. He's sick. Gene, I heard Paul scream from the from the other room. I ran as fast as I could. Why'd you leave him alone? Just I don't. Not even noticing that Ringo was following. <laughs> Ringo's like, oh no, Paul's hurt. Like maybe Ringo should have said, maybe you should, maybe Ringo should have asked her that. Like, well, maybe you should help him get dressed. Yeah, Ringo, Ringo is a good friend here. Ringo is worried about Paul because he's in this weird house with this weird woman who just needs to order him to get dressed even though he's deathly ill. And he's probably thinking, why did he have that big growth in his stomach? To find poor Polly laying on the floor with his pants halfway up and his jacket undone, Paul was now unconscious. Well, because you let a pregnant man dress himself. The fuck? Paul? Ringo tried to get Paul up. Well, let's get him de decent before we do anything else. I got Paul's pants while I got while Ringo fixed up Paul's coat. He's unconscious! <laughs> Rich, please be really careful with him, I said as we carried him out to the car. Ringo just thumped him down in the back, back seat of the car. Because of it, Paul hit his head on the door. I guess Ringo is not such a good friend. No, I think I think Ringo is starting to get really pissed off. Like, what the fuck is with this lady? I don't know. Everyone kind of acts like a dick eventually in this. Ow! Paul yelped, dumbfounded. What the bloody hell was that for? I figured out a way to strap Paul into the back seat of the car so he could lay down, and then off we went. At the doctor's. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Rich and I stayed in the rain room while Paul went in. Half an hour passes. Under come to me. Mrs. McCarthy? Also, by the way, these are this is an arc warning. She gets married to him. Uh. We're not married. I sighed. I'm pretty sure the nurse had this look on his on her face like Why did you do that exaggerated sigh? Are you like a Tisunder or some shit? <laughs> am I am I in another bad fan fiction? It's like, oh, god damn it. Another pregnant man. God damn it. Every pregnant man either has an asshole for a boyfriend or an asshole for a girlfriend. It's like, did you get him pregnant somehow, lady? Are you like a demon spawn? Okay, fine. Well, Paul's going to have to be ultrasound, and he said that he doesn't want to have us anywhere near him unless you're there. So could you please some end? Some in, okay. Sure, huh. I don't see why not. Everything this lady sounds like, everything she says sounds like a, an impression of a sarcastic teenage girl. Yeah, like, I don't know what this lady's deal is. Yeah. Um, I thought that, ultras, that ultrasounds were done on pregnant women to see the baby, Ringo commented. I want to hear Ringo's air log monk when, oh my god, it's worse than I thought. <laughs> she somehow got Ringo pregnant. She's actually a sucky bye. Also, they do ultrasounds for lots of stuff. They do ultrasounds for lots of things, but, you know, I'm pretty sure this person isn't that knowledgeable. Yeah. Okay, um, Paul condition is rare. If he needs to be done to see something in there, I quickly shot back and stared at him. Um, whatever the bloody hell Paul has is just plain weird, he said flatly. So I went out to the examination, exa the exam room. I kept, once inside, I saw Paul leaning on the exam table with no shirt on and a gigantic erection as big as he was. What? Nah, but a multitude of wires and monitors hooked up to his chest. S Paul smiled weakly at me. All right now, Mrs. McCarth Mr. McCarthy. Uh, now we can, can we now proceed with the procedure? 
asked the doctor. Fine, he said, all, is all that Paul said. I went over to Paul and gently held his hand. I want to hold your hand. <laughs> this is such a long fucking fanfic to get to the point where Paul just poops out a baby. God damn. Like, okay, you know what's really weird? People can sit down and write these things and finish them. And yet, I got like a bunch of projects, and you got a bunch of projects, and we don't finish them. This is one of those things. And that we don't have the patience of people who write multi chapter erotic Paul McCartney pregnant fan fiction. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I, one day I kind of thought, you know, I wish someone could bottle that need to write those kind of things. But then I'm thinking if you consumed that need, that the ability to finish things, all you would be writing is weird fan fiction okay there okay the nurse brought over a small bottle containing some lightly colored fluid in it she pulled popped open the cap on it and rubbed it on that's not liquid a little on his stomach with a cotton ball the doctor took a small instrument and slid it around on various spots on paul's belly okay did they have ultrasound back then uh what time is this book taking place that's a good question. Is this like in the 60s or is this like modern era Paul McCartney? It's like so poor old as shit Paul McCartney is being forced to have a baby from a teenager or something. At least I hope whoever wrote this was a teenager and not like some 30 something year old woman. Oh yeah. It'd be funny if you looked up like, oh she has to be like in her 30s now you look and she's like, she's in her 40s. <laughs> and, and okay, and uh, there's the liver, there's his large intestines, and what's this? He paused for a moment, stared at the screen. Nurse, magnify that for me. Oh, wait. God damn it, I missed the part. Uh, the doctor took out a small device, as many spots, Paul's belly, watched his small screen next to the exam table. He kept on making these mmming noises. I watched mm. the screen, trying to see any sign of movement. There's the liver, there's his large intestine, and what's this? He paused for a moment as he stared at the screen. Nurse, magnify this for me. What? What is it? I asked nervously. Well, do you see that side, the side of his stomach? I nodded. Well, now that's magnified, I can see that it is the baby. <laughs> and then Ringo's in there. What the fuck else would it be? <laughs> and of course, it's Ringo. Somehow, Ringo can do it. <laughs> Paul's condition is progressing very rapidly. He's only a few weeks pregnant. I know, but his pregnancy is that the equivalent of a woman who is three months pregnant. Oh my god, it is a Twilight baby. Oh fuck. Oh fuck, and then it keeps on growing and it's only another Paul McCartney. <laughs> I'm rejuvenated. I don't... <laughs> I didn't know what to think of this. Well, yeah, it's a man who somehow has a tumor baby that is three months along. I wouldn't know what to think of it either, man. I wouldn't know what to think of any of this. I mean, I know what I do think of all this. Of terrible. screaming in terror. <laughs> uh, much less what to say. I saw the baby on the screen. It shouldn't be a baby. It, it's it's literally floating around in his innards. There There's no embryonic fluid. There's no... Like, does this lady literally think embryonic fluid is the innards, uh, inner fluid of a human being? Like, I have no... I don't think they understand a lot of things. This is proof of the lack of uh, you know, poor sexual education in the United States, and I feel sad. <laughs> and also, uh, on the, I saw the baby on the screen, all right, and I also saw the look on discomfort on Paul's face. Because he's got a three-month-old baby, three-month-old pregnancy in his stomach. The baby has attached itself to the inside of Paul's stomach. The inside, the side of his stom Paul's stomach. Okay, where the fire... When the baby starts to kick, if it's facing the wrong way, it could very easily put a hole right through his stomach, which, if left untreated, will kill him. I gulped hard. Get that thing out of him. Yes. Right. Yeah, put, a, put a stop to this now. Put a stop to this now. That that's not right. That that thing isn't human. Like even like pro lifers would be coming up here and they'd be like, "Uh, yeah, we need to put a stop to this." That's a that's a that's a sin against God. That's not a child that should be born. That's a that's a fucking thing from John Carpenter's thing. That's an eldritch abomination waiting to happen. 
Is that the lump on Paul's belly it is? I asked curiously. Well, yeah! Of course it is. I, I just want to scream at this lady every moment. Yes, that's what it is. And if he keeps processing, progressing at this rate, he'll have the baby in a matter of weeks. God damn. Why a matter of weeks? How can I help reduce his pain then? Get that thing out of him. Yeah, that would be the that'd be the first step here. Like that 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 is wrong. This is wrong in all matters. I I don't know how to say this any other way. This is wrong. I have some papers written up for you on that. Here are here they are. He said as he handed me the short stack of papers. He shouldn't go back to work until the pregnancy is over, and even then, he'll need to stay in bed for a few weeks because of surgery, and then he'll need to heal. Therefore, I'm ordering Paul to be on bed rest until he goes into labor. I'm sorry, is Ringo still here? I like to think that Ringo is, like, trying to push the gurney out of the hospital or something. Like, Ringo's like, Paul, what's happening? I'm going to have a baby. She pregnant? Like what? You have a tumor? No, I have a baby in my belly. <laughs> what does she have you on? What does that woman have you on, man? My my Paul, my uh, Ringo accent just keeps on mutating. It does. <laughs> well, if okay, uh, excuse me for interrupting me, but how? But how will I know that he's gone into labor? What's gonna feel like? Paul asked, why, why, shyly. Oh, how will I know? Uh, well, you'll, if you can imagine it, the pain will be unbearable and will come and go f at, and come and go at fast, at first. At first. It should feel like a hard punch in his stomach, and each one will come closer to when the last one was. I don't know how and if you'll, and how if your water will break, because I cannot tell if there's any, any amniotic fluid in there or not. So... I just don't even know anymore. That, that baby is an X-Man. Or something. That thing could apparently survive in any condition. That baby is a Lovecraft power. That, that... I'm, I'm telling you, it's the Antichrist. If there is, and it breaks, I doubt you'll know, you know, but when it gets like that, you should be rushed to the emergency room immediately and have anyone, and have somebody phone me. I'll be one of the doctors that will be helping you deliver the baby. This is... Please, whatever you do, do not let anybody know what's going on that could possibly tell anyone that isn't a doctor that will be working on him, I pleaded. God damn. I'm pretty sure the doctor should reply, No, I'm going to tell everybody, because this is fucked up. <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. Well, first of all, why would the doctor tell anybody? Like... I mean, he should be telling, like, some kind of science journal or something at the very least. Well, after the baby's delivered, and, and all the science journals are just going to read and scream in terror. Because really? babies are already scary enough. And the idea that there's a woman somehow out there that can just shove a baby into you no matter what. Shouldn't we be asking how she did that? And the dude explained it. He said he's never seen it happen before. But, like, this is... Like everyone's acting like there's already a protocol here. Like I, I, I think he's I think he's hiding something that you know, after she leaves she calls the the Pentagon and goes, We found another one, we found another woman that can do this. She's she's actually a part of some mutant breed of human being that can just do this. This is their whole thing. Yeah. And it turns out the baby is like a clone of themselves. When can we go home, Paul asked wearily. Just as soon as we get you unhooked from all this stuff. Yeah, all this all this like science -y stuff as soon as we get you off it. You'll need to be checked in here frequently to make sure you that everything is okay. As in get that thing out of you. That that's not right. The doctor promptly removed him from the machines, and I buttoned up Paul's shirt for him. I put hit my arm around Paul's waist and helped him outside. Shouldn't he be in a wheelchair? Yeah, and then Ringo helped me bring him back into the car and drove us home. So why do you need the ultrasound? 
Oh, um, his condition's worsening, and I need to see the inside of him without having to cut him open. What that you say, Paul? Ringo asked. I'm pregnant, Paul said in a teeny voice. Ringo streets the car to a halt, which is what I would do too. Yeah. No, actually, no, first I would say, oh, you kidder, Paul. No, actually, I am pregnant. I have a baby attached to my stomach. Holy crap. Like, you know, I'd be to me, like, oh, you're high. What the bloody hell did you just say? He said he's pregnant, I said calmly. Oh, no, you don't. This is not happening. This can't be. I must be having a bad dream or something. He said he started to cry. Yeah, poor Ringo's crying now. <laughs> like, Ringo is thinking he's having, like, some acid flashback. Oh, oh Richie, man. everything's going to be okay. I'll explain w more once we get back to the house. No, I don't want to hear what's happening. This is some shit you should not know about. And so we drove back home in silence, an eerie silence. Yeah, because there's a man with a large tumor baby in the back. And the bitch who knocked him up. I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. The broad who knocked him up. Yeah, the, the broad. The broad that knocked him up. This is weird. One that was hard for me to stand. Fuck you. And when we got there, Ringo seemed to be a bit afraid to touch Paul. So I struggled to support all of Paul's body weight with my back, but I managed to get him into the house and onto the couch myself. See, he didn't want to catch the pregnant. <laughs> like, because, lady, you got him pregnant. How the fuck did you do that? Really, he should be terrified to touch her. Yeah. I think Ringo should have helped Paul in, and as soon as she comes to touch him, like to put her shirt and show hand on his shoulder, like, no, no, don't fucking touch me. Don't fucking ever touch me. Ever. <laughs> ever. Don't come near me. Don't breathe on me. All right, Ringo. Uh, okay, uh, all right, Bingo. I'm seeing. I'm unbuttoning his shirt. See that big lump there? That's the baby. And Ringo should have just gone like, "That's a tumor." <laughs> like you know, Ringo should try to like do his best Arnold Schwarzenegger impression and go, "That's a tumor." That's a tumor. That's a tumor. How the fuck did that happen? Well, do you want me to use the proper words or slang? What proper words would be there? The only words you have for this is screaming. Screaming, screaming. Never stop screaming. Yeah, this whole thing is just misguided. And he said, the proper words would just be fine, he said coldly. I still want to hear Ringo's inner monologue. As the hours go on, I learn more and more things that I was never meant to know. Because this is messed up, man. This is freaked out, man. This is freaking me out. Uh, Alright, well, just very it was just very complicated. But you see, instead of his sperm going inside of me, my egg went inside of his body. Just... That is just... Just... And it mixed up with his sperm and got up into his stomach somehow and it planted itself on the side of it. You know, when she wrote that sentence, she should have just looked at herself and went, What the fuck am I doing? One wrong move and Paul could die. Which is grounds for getting that fucking thing out of him. Yeah. He needs surgery to get it out. And after the surgery, Paul will need to be a few more weeks bed rest. But then he can work with you guys again and be like, I never want to see Paul again after that. I never want to see you. I want to need what? I said he's going to need some bed rest and some therapy. Yeah, like, like poor, poor Ringo is just going to go home and just contemplate getting that pistol out. Like, because like that by that point, you're never going to see anything. In, you're, you're never going to see anything that's going to top that again. Okay, and, and so again, all he wants. Ringo had his weird look on his face. Between shock, fright, and disgust. Weird look? That's a pretty normal look for something like this. Yeah. I just want Lovecraft to pop in and say, this is more fucked up than anything I've ever written. I just, just like, this is a David Cronenberg script. 
So whose fault it is? Excuse me? What did you just say? Uh, we're asking who to blame this horrifying abomination. Because yeah, whose fault is this? <laughs> Obviously God. Because God decided that we, we needed this. Look, this is an act of some evil deity. Okay, no, it's not a work of God. It's This is Satan's doing. Actually, no, I'm pretty sure Satan would be like, not me, man. Not me. I didn't do shit. Yeah, Satan had no part of this. Like, you know, God and Satan's like, nope, nope, we didn't do this shit. No. Hell no. No. It's like, whose fault is? Which, you, which of you is fucked up and made this happen? Which one of you is fucked up? Obviously, the lady who has her eggs that can pop out. Um. Okay, I don't know. Could I do you and... I could do you and any of you get... Uh, wait, what? I don't know. I could do you and get any of you pregnant. We'll know if it's my fault. What? Okay, what the fuck's this sentence? I don't know. I could do you and if you get pregnant, we'll know that it's my fault. Oh. That's a threat. That's a <laughs> fucking threat. Run, Ringo, and get the fuck out of there. Run for your life. Like, I I'm pretty sure she's saying that as she grinds herself against him. No, no way. That's the response you have. Towards a woman who can apparently get you pregnant with a baby that's a tumor. I'm hurt. You've always used to want me. She sighs. You know, I, I'm sorry. Like, I usually don't get angry at self-insert characters. You know, ladies, you can have all the, the wish fulfillment you want. But this is wrong. Yeah. This has gone past Mary Sue. This has gone past plain, you know, self-insert into some creepy shit. Yeah, this should not be. Like, you know, there's wish fulfillment, and then there's proving you are goddamn fucked in the head. I want to interview whoever wrote this. Need to have him on. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm hurt. Okay, is Paul going to be going to grow breasts? How should I know? I'd like to know. Because Lady, obviously... You know, this has had to have happened before. This can't be like a one-time thing she's done. Okay, so... Alright, I'm... I'm I How should I know? Okay, maybe maybe I should leave, Ringo said uneasily. No, he should have run screaming in terror. You don't have to go, I said in protest. No, that's alright, I think I need to go. He said right before he ran out the front door. Here? That should have been the end of the fic, actually. That should have. I'm, I'm starting to get tired of this fic. Okay, sigh. I just lost one of my best friends over this whole thing. I don't even want to know what the other two are going to think. And what about the fans? What will they think? Oh, they'll scream. They'll scream for it's their savior being born. Yeah, it'll be their beautiful Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. No, actually, what, shouldn't it be John Levin, Lennon delivering the baby from himself, the baby Jesus for the Beatles fans? Yeah, it'll be baby Lennon from Lennon. Yeah. Okay, I don't even want to think about it. It. I want to die, Paul said, crying on, into my shoulder. Oh, baby, you know you don't really want to die. Yes, I do. I won't yeah, I think, let you. I think he does. Okay, I'm starting to get really... Can we re can we move on and read something else? Yeah. Yeah, this Thanks. is... Actually, you want to read... Okay, that was... Okay, let me see if I can find another Beals fanfiction. Actually, while I do that, can you tell us another Beals uh, conspiracy theory? Um, the only one that I really have is the Paul McCartney one. Paul McCartney one. Yep. I don't know, I'm trying to... I'm trying to figure Beals conspiracy theories. Let me look it up. That was the classic fucked up fanfiction... Uh, it's all too much, or whatever. Let me go, god damn it, I closed it. What the fuck is the name of this stupid fucking thing? The The name of the fanfiction, you want to know the name of the fanfiction is? Yeah. It's all too much, and there's a slash, and it's all too much. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is all too much. Okay, let me see, Beatles, 
conspiracies. There's a top 10 conspir Beals conspiracy. Let's see what they are. Number 10, the Aquarium Conspiracy. The Beatles were the char charismatic brokes from Liverpool without a blah, 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 blah. The Aquarium. Aquarian Conspiracy? Um, I haven't heard of that one. Uh, let me see. The article is written in a, st a stupid manner. Let me see. I found a site. It said, uh, editors know people who who are sentimental about the Beatles will find it hard to believe that they were pumped up and used by the Illuminati to introduce soft drugs among the middle class American youth. Ah. Yeah, it, but, but everybody knows that. They were also vehicles for the induction of mind control trigger words into everyday jargon. <laughs> I recall well when the Beatles made their debut on the American rock scene. Their sudden and explosive popularity in America made no sense to me at the time. I could, couldn't could understand what was so great about the Beatles and why they were portrayed as threatening to the, uh, to the crown king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. America, after all, was the birthplace of rock and roll. Alan Freed and Doo-Wop Doo-Wop America alone could boast of the greatest names and groups of rock and roll. Not Europe, not Asia, certainly not England. American rock and roll performers were the envy of the world and were emulated and copied down to the smallest mannerism and details by Europeans and Asian youth. He's mentioned Asians a lot. How is it that the bar, the bar, a bar band from Liverpool doing, doing almost all American cover tunes like Chuck Berry songs would suddenly be blitzed across American media as the greatest sensation to ever hit the shores of America? Huh? Musically speaking, there was nothing fabulous about the Fab Four. They were a cover band. That's it. They were a cover band. Um, before they before they started really getting taken off, they pretty much were just uh, Elvis imitators. Oh. Did you know that before they were signed, their shows they would have on the shows they would like nail burning condoms to the um, walls and eat fried chicken on stage? Yes. Uh, America has the greatest sensation about that. They were coming around. That's it. Yes, they had some decent hits oh, after they took America by storm, but not before. So how is it that they got to the top of the rock and roll mountain here in America without actually really climbing it? It's simple. They were helicoptered up there by the committee of 300 and the Tavestuk Institute of Human Relations. And no one in a better position to tell you than it was than the author of this article... Dr. John Coleman, a.k.a. N. Ken Adachi. Um. Okay. Is that, is that this guy's screen name or what? I have no fucking idea. It's apparently, so yet again, as we do know, we both know, the Beatles are connected to the Illuminati. Right. Okay, so let me see if I can find another Beatles fan fiction. Okay, so apparently the Beatles were the were ones responsible for bringing on drugs and counterculture to the American youth to corrupt them. Makes sense. I guess it's better to blame Beatles than say, uh, you know, that James Brown is corrupting the white, powerful youth. Like, uh, don't say that, please, Mr. Racist. Okay, so Beatles conspiracies. Uh, Paul is dead. We already know that one. Did they cover up Paul's 1966 death? Damn it. Oh. Paul is dead. I know. We, we already know this. No, Paul isn't dead. He's a cyborg. Paul traveled back in time and killed himself. Aha. Uh -huh. And all the other Beatles were actually cyborg implants he replaced them with. Everything makes sense now. And are being controlled by the reptiloid pulp. Pope. Paul is dead conspiracy. Actually, all the Beals were replaced. Let me see if there let me see if there's an interesting. Actually, Paul is the Paul is the Antichrist. There we go. 
I swear if I, I've read I swear I've read a website that said Paul was the Antichrist, but that was many years ago. So I think I was confusing it with Prince Williams or Prince Charles. Anyway, this is totally true. But first of all, there isn't just some penultimate Antichrist according to the most interpretations of the New Testament. It is basically anyone that denies Jesus came to earth to save us all fuck ups from our fuck ups. Well, all of the Fab Four did a pretty good job of denying Jesus, so maybe they're all horsemen, horse, four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh huh. So the Beatles were replaced by the future Paul, McCart Paul McCartney, who was himself a plant by the lizard Pope, he went back in time and killed them all, and killed himself, and replaced all of them with cyborg representations themselves. Rep being controlled by the Reptile Pope as the Horsemen of the Apocalypse. It only makes perfect sense. Oh yeah, Daniel asked me about what art program you use. Uh, I use Paint Tool Sci. I, I told her, I, I said you use Paint Tool Sci. Did you also ask what tablet you're using? Uh, Wacom uh, Bamboo Create. Okay. Actually, I bought a new art thingy the other day. Yeah? Yeah, because I, I finally... I, I split up that money that I got that was supposed to pay for college. The money yes. was allocated to pay for... To pay off college loans. Which I don't think would have paid it off because it was only like 42000 So I no. uh, I put half... I put like a 30000 into a money market account. Yeah. And I put the the uh, the rest of it into savings. And uh, one of the things I bought was um, I'm gonna buy a new microphone, but also I bought a um, Surface Pro so I could draw while I'm out and about. Oh, cool! And I have uh, Manga Studio and Sci on it right now. So I need to uh, update the Manga Studio because it's only fi uh, five point one. I need to update it to five point two because it has the symmetry ruler. You ever, you ever play with something with the symmetry ruler? I have not. It's really cool. It's something where you basically you draw something on one side and draws it on the other side in a symmetrical pattern. Oh, that's actually really cool. Oh, and here's oh here's another uh, conspiracy theory. John Lennon was a nice dude. That is a conspiracy theory. Oh my, oh my God! I have to send you the picture that they have on there. Um, you have to look really close. Yeah, I've seen this. Do you see the penis? I do. I mean, it's kind of a weird wiener, but it's just it's a 60s wiener. They all looked weird. Yeah. It's as big as his arm. I think it's... it's a... Oh, oh. Uh, the Beatles are better than the Rolling Stones. Wait, that's conspiracy theory? No, that's just the truth. <laughs> Who would win in a fight between the Beatles and the... And, 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 uh... And the Rolling Stones. Um, I don't know. The Beatles are pretty much half dead, and then the Rolling Stones are—they're all technically alive, but in the same sense, they're all still pretty much half dead. Well, but you can't defeat them then. They're—they're—they're—they're they're, they're, they're undead. You can't really kill what is already dead. That is true. Okay, so you want to read another? Uh, you want me to read another? Fan, find another fan fiction to read? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of, I kind of got wrapped up in this commission. Okay, well I'll. So what's the commission of? Um, it is actually uh, my wife's character and then her friend's RP character. It's from one of her friends. Ah. And the one character is giving this dude a foot job. A what? A foot job. A butt job? No, a foot job. Oh, okay. With the feet. Okay, I was just like sitting there going, foot job? I, I heard it as foot job. I want to sing one. What's a foot jaw? What's a foot jaw? In this case, she's rubbing her feet onto his uh, wang. There we go. I still haven't mastered drawing feet, so I would not be able to draw a foot jaw commission. I'm still working on drawing feet, but I think they're coming along better. Hey, uh, you know, uh, one of the things I learned that's good for foreshortening, mm -hmm. uh, you, ever, you ever tried the coiling technique? I do, actually. Okay, like I need to practice that. It comes in handy. It's really good. 
Do, 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 Did you know, actually, one of my favorite conspiracies that had to do with the, has to do with both the Residents and Beatles? What's that? There was a long-running, uh, it was part conspiracy theory and part joke, and you could kind of tell, like, you know, you can kind of gauge who, what people, who they are, if, like, on what side they fall on. Yeah. There was a conspiracy theory that the Beatles, that the Residents were actually were the Beatles. See that? I could actually get behind i could probably see that but aren't there like like way more members of the residents than there were the beatles well the thing is about the residents is that since they are a massed group they could have a large circulating member of groups uh, members of the band and besides they did collaborate with a lot of people because mm. on the albums you would see collaborators of the residents like say they collaborated with um they both collaborated with uh uh, uh god damn what's his name the guy who was uh with Trout, uh, fit heart trout, <sighs> Captain Beefheart. Oh, okay. They they did they cut an album. They did some songs with Captain Beefheart, uh, Beefheart, uh, Tom Waits. Um, what's that? What's that one singer? The one lady singer. God damn it. The resident, res, res. Uh, I'm I'm res. I'm I've forgotten how to spell the word resident. R e s i e d. I'm sorry, R-E-S-I-D-E-N-T. Thanks. Resident. Oh, there's also a Japanese tribute band to the Residents. Really? I can actually see that. Picnic Boy. Okay, who's saying on Picnic Boy? Uh, Picnic Boy. We singer. Crib. I got there. Who's the singer? The singer. Got there. Picnic boy. Commercial album. Who was on there? Oh, uh, <laughs> the faces on the cover of the album are uh, John Travolta and Barbara Streisand. Yeah. And um, they uh were all they uh were. And you know, there's this really cool dude that used to play guitar with them, but until he died, called Snakefinger. Hmm. He was, he's actually was one of their favorite guys to um, L- Lena Lovich. You ever hear of her? No. Oh, she's really cool. She she's uh she and this other singer from the eighties were is what Lady Gaga and those kind of singers want to be. Like she she is actually you know like you know how Lady Gaga always wants to be weird and bizarre. This lady was like actually bizarre. Yeah, she was she was truly bizarre and ethereal, like along with this other singer called who did uh who did the song No More I Love Yous. Okay, um Anna Anna like Lonex. You ever hear of huh. her? No, I'm not familiar. Oh, she's really cool too, you should look her up too. Yet again, she's another weird, like, that weirdness and sort of etherealness is, like, second nature to her. Okay. Also, I found the Flutterfly fanfiction and the uh, Charizard fanfiction. Which we started to read on another cast, but then stopped halfway through. About to finish that at some point. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can find any more Beatles things. Oh! Hey, you ever hear of the famous fan fiction called Artemis Lover? No. And it's by uh by the author Oscar, and in the same book it has a character in the same uh, and in the fan fiction there's a character called Arthur Art Oscar. Huh. Um, it's from the Sailor Moon fandom, and it has the pairing Artemis and Oscar. You remember who Artemis is in Sailor Moon? Yes. The little white cat. The little white cat. Yeah. Apparently, and the synopsis is Oscar is a 13-year-old Peruvian hermaphrodite who is in love with the character from Sailor Moon, specifically Art- Artemis the Cat. And 12 years ago, this, this fanfic is like old as shit. Like, it's it's not even on fanfiction.net. It's like on a word. It's like on a notepad document on the web. 
Um, <laughs> and it, it's like one of those. It was one of those famous fan fictions that just popped up on the web, and everybody went, "Who wrote this? What? Why does this exist?" It was. It was a sign of things to come. Yep, it can only go uphill from here. Oh, yeah. Did you uh, did you see the 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 prototype for the uh, YouTube banner? I need to work on that. That that was something I did with the uh, symmetry ruler. I did see that. All right, so I need to work on more on that. So, what do you think? I, I'm I'm obviously gonna tweak it a bit more. Say so what? what? Time is the brat supposed to get off? Eleven. Okay. Was that Chris? No, that was that was uh, mother-in-law. Oh, hi, mother-in-law. <laughs> all right, I think that may be all the podcasting I have in for me in me for tonight. So. Okay. Um, final thoughts? Final thoughts? Um, whoever wrote that fan fiction was very strange and fucked up. Uh, there, are is- there are issues at play here. There are issues at play. Um, it was very long. Like, fucking 21 pages long. Like, ultra needlessly long. Yeah, like, just, like, why is it that long? Um... What, how, where did you get the idea of Paul being pregnant and why? And and why in general? Just just why? Why? Screaming why? Anyway, uh, we, we're going to say hi to Mr. AIDS at the end of the podcast. We're saying your name. Hi, Mr. AIDS. Everybody, give your love to Mr. AIDS. Give your love and send him money, because he edits our casts. Mr. AIDS does all the magic. He makes this happen. Yeah, he, he's a magical man, or woman, or... No, I haven't really talked to Mr. AIDS yet. Oh, really?